The blessed month of Ramadan is here again and it is a season that offers the widest opportunity to maximize rewards from Allah. Avail yourself these opportunities by picking sponsorship of any of our spiritually rewarding programs. Tarawi prayers from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, living in the month of Ramadan, reason to believe interactive segment which broadens your knowledge in Islam. Our call to prayers in three segments are also avenues for worship. For sponsorship details, please contact Basira on 0823-373-8264 or Said on 0817-419-7521. Ramadan Diet. It's all about spiritual upliftment. Ma Salam. Ramadan is here. things from that very educating lecture coming up next inshallah is Claire Pat Stefsir do stay with us illa Allah la ilaha illa Allah ma lana rabbun siwa la ilaha Allah la ilaha Allah حتى ترضى وإذا رضيت حتى كانت من أما في علمك وزنته وعددا وحتى تعلمني أسرار حكمتك وتحفظني جوامع كتابك وتفهمني جوامع كلماتك وتفسير آياتك بحفظ إنا نحن نزلنا الذكرى وإنا له لحافظون اللهم افتح لنا كتابك وسنة نبيك ظاهرا وباطنا وارزقنا العمل بهما بذاتك المقدسة اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الرجال قوامون على النساء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام 
على سيد المرسلين محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the owner of all tongues and praise We praise him, we glorify him We testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah alone and that our teacher, model, guide Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant and messenger We thank Allah for saddling us this blessed moment in this blessed vicinity with the most blessed endeavor and that is keeping us engaged with study of the glorious Quran in this special hour also at this special location we pray Allah Azza wa Jalla to grant us the promised reward for engaging in this kind of noble activity inshallah we'll be proceeding from verse number 34 of Surah Al-Nisa where we stopped last week and that is the point where Allah Azza wa Jalla is defining issues defining and resolving controversies and by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also clearly in an unambiguous manner stated where, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided to state in very clear terms where does order reside in the family institution and what are the corresponding obligations, responsibilities and privileges that exist between the male and the female folk in the family institution. The first principle here, which is sufficient if we were to simply stop on the first sentence in the verse, which is Arrijalu Kawamuna Alamnisa. Allah says the males are the Kawamun on their female counterparts. We are explaining to us that the word Kawamun is such word that has different shades of meaning. It has multiple angles. But what is observed is that there can be either conscious or unconscious, or I will say sometimes deliberate excessive emphasis on some of the shades of meaning as against the others. We recite in Ayatul Kursi. In Ayatul Kursi, we recite what? The first sentence in Ayatul Kursi is what? Allah la ilaha illahu al hayyu al qayyum. Al hayyu al qayyum. Describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, Allah, none is worthy of worship except him alone. He is the living al hayy and then the Qayyum. The Sifa Qayyum can be looked at from two angles. From the intransitive angle, meaning describing Allah as an entity that is self-subsisting. But Allah has said Al Qayyum. He has not said Al Qayyum binafsihi. That phrase is not there. It could also be Al Qayyum even ala khalkihi. It is also not there. So the good interpretation one can give to such phrase of the Quran is to accord the two. Allah, if you say is Qayyum self subsistent I said last week that the word Qawwam has its root. It is a, the subject participle 
in the Mubalaga case, when we say Mubalaga in uh, uh, Arabic morphology, it means uh, showing extent or intensity of the applicability of a particular verb or action. If you say, this is Akil, he likes to eat, but there is just something slightly extra about his appetite. By the time you call him Akal, ah, that's a different thing. You are simply saying what in Yoruba balance you will call Oje. That means there is something beyond the ordinary, something particularly strange. If you now go to the level of Fa'ul, you now call him Akul, then it means that person is not existing for anything except to eat. Are we there? But all have the same root in one verb, that is the act of eating. I've just used that as illustration. The same thing is the word kawam. Men are the kawamun ala nisa. The root is to say qa'im. Or in the fa'il sense, it can be qa'im ala. When Allah now comes with it, it gives a different interpretation. And that will mean to care for, to protect, to guard, to sustain. And in some other angle, like Allah is referring to himself as Qayyumu Samawati wal Ard, as you will find it in some of the ma'athurat, in some of the prayers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi if Allah is being referred to as Qayyumu Samawati Wal Ard or as Qayyumu As Samawati Wal Ard, that means the sustainer of the heavens and the earth. That is the language of the Sunnah. And if you also compare some other verses of the Quran, like I'm saying in Ayatul Kursi, if Allah calls Himself Al Qayyum, it means He is self subsisting in Himself. And at the same time, he is also the sustainer, are we there? The sustainer of everything in existence. So that every other thing in existence depends on Allah, while Allah is self-subsisting in himself. An accurate translator must be able to reveal the two shades. If Allah now says, Ar-Rijalu Qawwamuna Ala Nisa. There is always privilege attached to every responsibility. Agreed. But it is more rational to place responsibility ahead of privilege. Do we agree? If as the CEO of an establishment or a chief executive of a state or of the federation, we all know that by virtue of their offices, they are entitled to certain privileges. Privileges of comfort, privileges of aids, privileges even to some extent of immunity to a very considerable extent, even to the law. Privileges in several regards. But what has come first? Is it the responsibility that they have assumed or the privileges that they will have to enjoy as a result of the office they occupy? Which one? Ah, it is the responsibilities. And in fact, those privileges are in fact accorded so that the responsibilities will be easier discharged. Are we there? Don't drive yourself. You have a driver. You don't have to be doing everything on your own. You have a, a personal assistant. You have a messenger, one person. You, are, you have instances where there are about 10 attendants 
attending to just one individual. When an ignorant person sees that, he will look at it as if it's unnecessary that they are just being a lavish. But the intent and purpose of that is that let us make things convenient for him so that he will not have time to think of any other thing except the assignment that we have given him. So while he's being driven in the car, in the, in the hold-up, in the traffic, for example, he's also still working on his computer, either sending a mail or reading a mail or doing some correspondences, well, which, had it been still the same person driving, he wouldn't have been able to do that. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accorded men, please, a job, won't disturb me, a lot of them. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to accord as accorded men, if Allah azza wa jalla as accorded men certain privileges in marriage institution, those privileges are resultant from the responsibilities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has imposed. And it is just in order that there should be order. Al Rijalu Kawamuna ala nisa. We are saying that Kawam means to take care in the light of the other verse I, I referred to and in the light of the other a prayer of the Prophet Sallam I referred to referring Allah as Qayyimu Samawati wal Ab that aspect reflects more the side of sustaining the side of sustaining the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defined clearly the role of men as caretakers of women sustainers, supporters, nurturers, cherishers of women, protectors of women. That is the main responsibility which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saddled the male folk with. Yes, we cannot also rule it out that we can as well deduce from the same word qawwamun ala nisa some inferences of privileges in terms of authority, especially in the light of what has been popularly reported as the sabab al-nuzul of the verse, and that is in the case of a nagging uh, woman, bint Muhammad, not Muhammad of the Prophet Sallallahu another one, who's, uh, who incurred the wrath of her husband and then suffered a slap. And what happened was that the father went with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to report to the Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was about making an order for Qisas. And we mean by Qisas, retribution. And what that means is that the woman will also be allowed to retaliate. Which ordinarily was the, you know, uh, 
But before the Prophet Sallam could decide, according to that report, it was said that this verse was revealed. And the number of Mufassirun have held on to that as the cause of revelation of the verse. And um, the problem really per se is not about the, the report that has been alluded to have been the cause of revelation of the verse. But what, to what extent can we say are accurate some of the inferences that some of us have inferred from that? If the husband had wrongfully slapped his wife, because there is no how we can say it can in any way ever be right for someone to slap another person. And there were to be kisas meted out. That is retribution. And before then, a verse came saying, Al Will that in any way translate to a kind of um, uh, arbitrary power conferred on men as against the women? Because at the end of the verse, we also see another phrase that causes of confusion. Definitely, there are different ways of uh, correcting or redressing wrongs done between two people who are not at the same level of privilege. Can we say it is wrong even for a father to slap his own son? It is wrong because the Prophet Sallam has even prohibited Walla Tadri bil Wajha. On no account should a Muslim or anyone at all be beaten on the face. So, if the father out of hunger or annoyance slaps a son or a master slaps someone who is inferior to him, that is an aggression. It is a transgression. But it is not just sensible to now say that that should be redressed by saying that the superior should also stand so that the inferior should also come and give his own dirty slap again as a way of redressing the transgression of the superior one. And both of them are bound by the same institution, like marriage or like family tie. There will always be ways of settling that. The message of Allah Sallallahu shouldn't have. If Allah says, Al-Rijalu Qawwamuna Ala Nisa, yeah, man is in charge in terms of family institution, and as a result of which, man is also in position to effect correction when there are things going wrong in the family's institution, but man can transgress the limit. Are we there? In this exercise of that power of uh, effecting correction. When he now transgresses the limit, it shouldn't be by kisas that such, for example, in, in Islam, if a father out of uh, annoyance now beats his son to death, that's ordinarily a murder case, isn't it? But it is standard in the Sharia that you cannot kill a father for a son. The, the, the reasoning is because it's, it's not going to solve a problem. It's, it will rather even compound the problem because the two people involved are bound by the same institution. If in the case of murder, for example, you will lose even two lives instead of one. Are we there? The son has gone, then the father will also have to follow. So the remedy should be something else. And indeed, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines the status of man and the fact that man, yes, is in charge, but he is in charge as a matter of responsibility, not as a matter of privilege. Allah says, Qawwamuna ala nisa bima faddalallahu bihi ba'dahum ala ba'd. And we all agreed that when 
there is responsibility, there comes along with it some privileges as well. But it is not for men to overplay the side of privilege and downplay the side of responsibility. And that is why Allah is tying the two together. Men are constituted as caretakers of, of women. Why? Because they are preferred. Allah has endowed them with certain abilities that are, that with which women are not endowed. Another area here is you find the Mufassirun also commenting on what are the privileges that women have against men? Part of which one may agree and there are also some with which one may disagree. But no matter how uh, uh, disagreeable we may find some of these points, one thing that is important is that the only thing that Allah has said is that men are caretakers of women because the men are better endowed regarding some privileges than their female folk. And those areas of privileges of men are not specifically mentioned in the Quran. Are we there? So there are those that are obvious that the men are more physically stronger than women. Yes or no? That is not disputable. Is that? And if you want to carry out an experiment, like I used to say, it's very simple. Let us just have the super eagles and the super falcons to play a 45 minutes match on the same field. And let us see how many casualties are we going to have. Or you make a male boxer and a female boxer. <laughs> and then we know. It, it's just obvious. Nobody can contest with that. And if we say that is what Allah is referring to, it may make a lot of sense. Because in part of the responsibilities of a leader is to provide security. Are we there? Economic security, security of life, security of property, even social securities. And if we look at the makeup of men, vis-a-vis -vis the women folk, we all will agree that they are better positioned to perform that responsibility than the women. Emotionally, we can also agree men can be stronger. The level of resistance of men to attend or react to uh, emotionally traumatizing situation can be a lot stronger. A man can be bereaved and at the same time continue with his responsibilities as if nothing has happened. But that is not something an ordinary woman can do. Psychologically, one may also say that men can be stronger than women. But it may be arguable. Some have also adduced that intelligence-wise, men are more intelligent than women. Do we all agree with that? Huh? La ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah ma lana rabbun siwa La ilaha illallah la ilaha educating us on some of the principles of Islam. Coming up next, inshallah, is the program by Zakat and Solako Foundation. Please stay with us. For Allah, nothing but Allah. Ba is the beginning of Bismillah. Ta is for Taqwa, the wearing of Allah. And Tha is for Thawab, a reward. Ja is for Jannah, the garden of paradise. Ha is for Hajj, the blessed pilgrimage. 
Khais for Khatem, the seal of the prophethood given to the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dies for Deen, Al Islam, religion with Allah since time began. That is for Dik, remembering Allah, and rise for the month of Ramadan. Azulahi mina shaitan rajim, Smilai Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa salim tasliman Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We welcome you viewers at home to your program, our program Path to Paradise Today promise to be another exciting edition We are today at And this can only be made possible when we pay our zakat Please let's endeavor to pay our zakat as it serves as a way of purifying our wealth now I'm coming up next inshallah is reason to believe. Please enjoy it. Ya Imam al anta fil wujdani hayyun, anta lil aynayn dayyun, anta inda al hawbiriyun, anta hanin wa safiyun, ya habibi ya Salam alayka Ya Rasul Salam alayka Ya Habib Salam alayka Salawatullah alayka Ali ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu qal قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحل دم امرئ مسلم إلا بإحدى ثلاث الثيب الزاني والنفس بالنفس والتارك لدينه